All right, it's, it's time we talk about it. You know what I'm talking about. It's time we talk about that elephant in the room. That big, scary elephant that, let's face it, really is more of like a giant bear that wants to devour us. So we keep telling ourselves, eh, we'll deal with that later. But no more. Today, we are going to go over three different tips to help us deal with and destroy those evil stimulus multiple choice questions that, let's face it, we've all been putting off. Now, the reason why we need to talk about these questions is because come May, you will have to answer 60 multiple choice questions on your AP Human Geography exam. And you'll only have 60 minutes to do so. Out of those 60 multiple choice questions, about 30 to 40% of those questions will reference some stimulus. Plus, this section equals 50% of your exam score. So yeah, we need to talk about those annoying and somewhat terrifying stimulus multiple choice questions. And this leads me to my first tip, which is we need to understand the exam. We already went over the format of the multiple choice section, but lucky for you, the College Board has also told us exactly what stimuli we need to be prepared for. We can see that stimulus materials will include maps, tables, charts, graphs, images, infographs, and or landscapes. College Board has also let us know that these stimulus questions will be evenly split between quantitative and qualitative sources. So make sure you're familiar with both sets of data. Honestly, understanding that the College Board is going to use these different stimuli allows us to practice in advance so that way when we get to the AP national exam we're more prepared and familiar with all the different types of stimuli that could appear. Make sure you spend time practicing questions that connect to each of these different stimuli. Do not, and I repeat, do not have the first time you've tried to answer a question dealing with one of these stimuli be on the national exam. All that will do to you is cause you to start panicking, stress out during the exam, which is good for no one. You'll end up wasting your time and feeling pretty bad after. Now, when it comes to the test and answering these questions, I need you to slow down. Yes, tip number two is, Slow down. During a test, you are stressed and most likely concerned about the time. This causes you to speed read and skim, resulting in you missing easy points. Just think about how many times you've looked over a test after you got it back from your teacher, only to find you see question after question that you know, but for some reason didn't get right because you put some random answer and you just sit there thinking to yourself, like, what in the world was I thinking? Well, you probably weren't really thinking that clearly during the test. You were more stressed and you were rushing. So do me a favor and slow down. When you see a stimulus question, do these steps in this order, and I assure you that you will not only start getting more questions right, but you will actually save time and answer more questions quicker, which I realize sounds like it contradicts itself. By slowing down, you save time, which allows you to answer questions quicker. It doesn't really make sense. So let me explain. When you come across a stimulus question, the first thing you need to do is read the title, the legend, the source, and any other supporting information of the stimulus. While reading these parts of the stimulus, make sure you underline any key bits of information that you believe to be important. For instance, here I can see the stimulus is looking at the total coal miner employment versus productivity. The black line is the production per miner and the bar graph is the total U.S. miner employment. I can also see the data is in thousands of tons per year and comes from the Energy Information Agency. Now that we've done that, we need to go on to step number two, which is to take 10 seconds and observe the stimulus. This is key. Before you get to the question, just look at the stimulus. When looking at it, see if you can identify any trends, patterns, and themes that are being presented to you. Going back to our example, I can see that coal miner employment in the United States has decreased from 1920 to 2015, while at the same time, production per miner has increased. Right away, I'm thinking about technological advancements. I notice that we have less people working in the sector, but people are more productive overall. All right, now comes step three, read, underline, and answer the question. So after spending time with the stimulus, we now move on to the question. Going back to our example, I can see that the question is asking for a reason for the change in coal miners employed in the United States from 1950 to 2000, which I already noticed when observing the data before I read the question. Now, one thing to point out here is that while I've been talking, if you've noticed, I've been underlining and highlighting different parts of the question and stimulus. This step is crucial for you to do. This not only helps you focus on key words and concepts, but it slows your brain down and forces you to read everything. 
This will decrease the chance of you missing a word or concept because you started to skim. For instance, when reading this question, I underlined the dates because even though the stimulus gives us information from 1920 to 2015, the question's only asking about 1950 to 2000. So I wanna make sure that I don't focus on that extra data. This is why in my ultimate review packet, I've included exclusive videos of me taking practice tests. I wanted to help you practice implementing these strategies so that when it comes to the real AP test, you feel prepared. If you have not checked out the packet yet, you can do so today for free by signing up for a free preview. Just click the link in the description below. Going back to the question, I can right away eliminate a couple of the answers. Devolution deals with the transfer of power from a central government to regional governments. So I could probably eliminate that. The Industrial Revolution would increase jobs, plus the time frame is off for the answer, and just-in-time production deals with manufacturing. So we can probably eliminate those answers, and now we can see we have it down to a 50-50. One of our answers is technology and diffusion, and the other is deindustrialization. Now to make things a little bit more fun, instead of just giving you the answer, you let me know what the answer is down in the comment section below. All right, now comes my final tip, which is tip number three. Practice. You need to take practice tests. You need to practice observing data. You need to practice underlining parts of the question. You need to practice breaking down questions you may not know. And you need to practice taking tests in a timed situation. I cannot stress enough how important it is to take practice tests. And importantly, practice taking tests in a testing environment. You need to time yourself when taking these practice tests. Treat them like they're the real thing. The more you do this, the more you will get used to testing under pressure, and the easier it will be to take the test come May. One of the biggest stresses that students often have is running out of time on the test, and one of the easiest ways to reduce the stress is to practice taking time tests. If you are looking for any practice tests, make sure to talk to your teacher and ask them if they can post any practice tests on your College Board classroom page. These are great for practicing both multiple choice questions and FRQs. Another resource you can use is my new test pack, which comes with 21 full FRQs with 147 FRQ questions and over 700 multiple choice questions, each broken down by the different topics listed in the CED. At the end of the day, just remember it's just a test and you can do this. No matter what happens come May, you will be fine. All right, that's all we have for today. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.